that's that that's how it works. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Mihai Patra, and I'm the executive director of Caravans Ride Project. And as many of you know, I see a lot of uh, friendly faces and names um, that have been attending our monthly webinars for a very long time. We're just thinking the other day we started this series, uh, March 2020, when COVID hit. So it's it's been a long time. Um, but, and obviously over the last three years, our organization has grown uh, a lot and many of the topics that we bring in front of you are very connected to what we have experienced as an organization. And I would say one of the most exciting things that have has happened to us is that we constantly growing and adding new team members to the organization and our latest hires are here brian munoz and sierra team they just brian is his first day today sierra has been with us for two weeks um and what we have learned over these last three months is that there are a lot of resources out there that that can help for profit non-profit small businesses grow their teams and I know it. we all know it's a scary process to hire. There is a lot of uh, planning that goes around it. There is always concern about funding, always uh, concern about where do we find the right resources. And because of a recommendation we got, th that's how we learned about um, the resources that Riverside County has for uh, small businesses. And that's how we interacted and uh, benefiting from um, Carmen's experience and we invited her today to tell us about what's available in terms of resources for small businesses, um, how you can plan ahead, thinking about adding your next uh, team members and um, Carmen, um, uh, we've been discussing a lot about when should she join us and Carmen Kiros, thank you for so much for joining us and you have the floor. I don't think we should waste more time, uh, but just jump into the conversation. Thank you, Mahai. Hello everyone and, and welcome to our webinar. Thank you for being here. Um, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat uh, while we get started if you haven't done so already. Um, my name is Carmen and I'm a development specialist uh, with employer services here at the County of Riverside. And today we partner with um, Caravan Sarai Project to bring you valuable information um, and resources to your business. Um, so I'm gonna get started. I like to make this a uh, conversation instead of a presentation. So Bradley is our moderator. Feel free to jump in if you have any questions um, and then he can help us with the questions and as we move along through each slide. But um, I, I like it. Uh, I like it to be more of a conversation where we can bounce off of each other and, and be able to get the information that we need. So if I can get the first, uh, the first, the second slide, Bradley, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, let me see. So the workforce development ecosystem. So first of all, throughout the county, our workforce development centers work in partnership with obviously different departments within the county, the cities and other economic entities. We work together to recruit, sustain and grow businesses. Our main job is to make hiring and recruitment and retention easier for you guys, especially small businesses. Um, so we work with different partners. We work with different education organizations to try to help you to get the resources, not only the financial resources that you need, but um, the recruitment and the right fits that each um, business requires. Um, can I go to the next slide? So we offer, um, there's three parts to us. We have an adult um, section, we have a youth section, and we have the employer services section. I particularly focus uh, on employers. We offer a whole array of services, including analysis of business needs. And today we will be touching on 
uh, hiring incentives, recruitment support, tax incentives, uh, business retention and expansion, um, the HR, uh, human resources, labor market, and rapid response. A lot of business owners don't know that we offer all of these different services, and obviously they're 100% um, free and available to you as a business owners. We're going to be touching on, on the job training meaning that there are funds available for those businesses who are uh, trying to hire or are looking forward to hire someone, um, and, but require additional funding. We're going to be uh, touching on the different recruitment and job fairs that we hold uh, or that we can put together for you guys. Um, and uh, we're going to be touching on online job, uh, our job boards and so forth. So uh, next slide. So like I said, um, we're here to help. We're here to foster economic development and assist businesses in finding solutions according to their needs. Um, whether that is recruitment or downsizing or providing funds, we bridge that gap between you and the workforce. Our main focus is to be able to provide you with skilled, uh, with a skilled and prepared workforce. So I want to kind of take a minute here and just ask if there's any questions. I know this is an introduction. It's kind of like a long introduction, but are there any questions so far? No? Okay. So I'm just going to move forward. It's actually a pretty, it, yeah, go ahead. Um, do, well, I'm new to this. I, I my, um, the, my manager wanted me to sit in for this meeting, but is this something we apply for or is this something that we, are you going to probably go over that or how we can get? Yeah. So the this? programs, yes. So the programs uh, um, do, you do have to apply for the programs, but then there's, for example, other resources that you can access that are completely free. For example, if you um, are trying to fill in a specific position, you are more than welcome to just give us a call and tell us, you know, I have this open position, I'm having trouble filling it out. And then we're more than happy to give you that support um, and give you more exposure, give your job a posting more exposure or um, be able to scrape our database for um, that ideal candidate that you're looking for. So not all the programs is that you have to put an application and qualify. Okay. Um, mostly the ones that you, if it requires funding, it is on an application basis. Okay. And then we'll, we'll we'll touch on those that require an application and then we'll touch on those services that don't require anything but, you know, just a phone call or an email. Okay, thank you so much. Uh-huh. So like I said, so we bridge the gap pretty much um and our job is to make your life easier so you can concentrate on your business. So you can concentrate on what's really important which is, you know, running your business. Um best of all our services are offered to all businesses of all sizes at no cost to you. Uh we work with anything from family run mom and pop shops which we have a lot here in the valley. Um, I'm actually here in India. Um, I see a bunch of different zip codes and that's actually very exciting. Um, and then we also work with, you know, with a, a lar larger businesses, you know, worldwide corporations. Next slide. So um, employer services focuses on seven industries. Um, so the question is, who doesn't want to save as a business owner, who doesn't want to save time and money and getting paid for employing someone? So pretty much free labor, right? Um, what if I tell you that we can help you offset the cost of training those individu individuals? Or better yet, what if I can get you guys a significant tax break from hiring those new employees? So we have different ways of doing this and the Riverside County Workforce Development Center can help with this and more. So uh, to begin with, we focus on seven industries. We work with healthcare, we work with manufacturing. So healthcare, meaning medical offices, dentists, pharmacies, laboratories, anything that pertains to healthcare, it's one industry that we work with. Manufacturing. Any production of goods uh, through the use of labor, machinery, or tools, that's another industry that we, we focus on. Logistics and transportation, and it, like if you run a storage company, an inventory service, um, delivery services, um, anything that requires you to move products or individuals, we work with that. Construction, 
anything that, you know, obviously involves building or maintaining and repairing structures. That's another one of our, uh, another industry that we focus on. And then administrative support. This one's kind of broad, um, but it pertains mainly to um, administrative assistance or any uh, help with day-to-day -day operations of an office. And then if you are living in the Coachella Valley or your business is located in the Coachella Valley, um, you guys get special treatment. Uh, you won't see it here on the slide, but we do hospitality. And the reason you don't see it on the slide, it's because um, we only do it, we only make that exception for the Coachella Valley. Uh, a good 80% um, of our income derives from hospitality here in the Coachella Valley, the restaurants, the hotels, um, because it's a tourism area. So uh, if you own a hotel or a restaurant, you can, as long as it's within the Coachella Valley, then that would be a, um, that would be another key industry. But if it's outside of the Coachella Valley, unfortunately, it's not. Um, any questions so far on this slide? Or if your business, if you feel like your business doesn't uh, fall under these categories? In each of these categories, we have a little wiggle room. Um, maybe it might seem like it's just seven, but um, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different careers fall under these seven categories. So we can always, we always have a little wiggle room to try uh, to fit all of uh, the different industries or different jobs within these seven categories. Uh, next slide. I mean, yes. Hi, yes. Ros Rosina. Yes, I have a question. Yes. So do you also support like um, beauty salons and, and that kind of industry or, or that's not part of, um, of that, other services? So beauty salons, we are working. It's something that has been brought up to the table just because um, there's a lot of there's there is there are a lot of hair salons out there or beauty salons that are not getting the help that they need to get. Uh, currently, it is not one of the key industries that we we focus on, but it has been brought up in recent conversations. So we're hoping that soon we'll have something or at least another category where we will be able to work with beauty salons. We also okay. don't it's not just beauty salons. We also don't work with um, the cannabis industry. So, For example, uh, would, that, uh, would someone be able to reach out to you and explore the opportunity if it's in the other services? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And at the end of the presentation, at the end of the slides, my um, my contact information is there. If the As long as the business is located um, within the Coachella Valley. And uh, we do work with childcare. I saw another another um, question. We do work under childcare because it falls under um, social needs um, or other services. So if you look closely, it'll say other services, and that's where we can squeeze in other other um, areas or other um, descriptions that are not clearly described here on this slide. However, beauty salons is not one of them yet. I also have a, a question. Um, are you going to be touching on these? Like, um, like if I have a question about like administrative support, if we're like a mental health facility, um, so we fall under healthcare, mm -hmm. would we be able to get administrative support within that, within our yes. mental health facility? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And do you go over like what kind of support or do we get like links so we can see the different... Um, options we have like to so get ev support. every industry gets the same whether okay. it's funding recruitment upsizing downsizing and retention and training okay. nice okay yeah. and so and we'll go over the different programs that we have oh nice okay okay i think we can if there are not any more Leave questions yeah, i also so. have a question from hi brian yes hi how are you i um I just wanted to ask if my industry fits in this um, program. I do heating and air conditioning, so I just want to make sure that it Absolutely. Fits. So you would go under um, construction. I see. Okay? You would go under construction. Why? Because when you are working with that, I'm pretty sure you have to sometimes build things or do some construction to be able to fit, 
fit whatever, you know, whatever HVAC equipment you're working with, correct? Exactly, yes. Sometimes, right? Yes. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question too. Hi, Alanis. Hey, um, so I was at the SBDC um, conference, I think it was like back in February, maybe. Yes. And I know you guys spoke about a program that you have to be open for one year and then you could get some sort of grant when it comes to a, a reimbursement for payroll costs. Is yes. that something you will go over today? So no, uh, payroll cost that's over with the Office of Economic Development. And I do have a contact if you need to get a hold of someone there. Okay. Um, could you give that to me or no? Yes, I can I can go ahead and give that to you. Um so Carmen? Hi. Yes. Hi Hugo. How are you doing? Good, how are, how are you? Are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thanks. I am with the Coachella Valley SBDC. So any questions regarding these types of grants, I'd be more than happy to talk to them about it. I'm going to put my contact info in the chat. Perfect. This is about the Thrive Grant Program um, that uh, Atlantis is asking about. So I'd be happy to touch base with her. Oh, thank you, Hugo. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> with pleasure. <laughs> thank you so thank much. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, Bradley, I think we can move on to the next slide. So this is where we're going to start talking about what employer services offers to you guys. So we focus on growing your business workforce, um, training your workforce, and downsizing your workforce. Growing your workforce, um, we do things like recruitment, monthly job fairs, scraping our databases, um, giving more exposure to your job list listings, um, distributing flyers through our different channels and networks, um, providing referrals to other partner agencies and orgs, um, and then pre-screening job candidates for you, as well as being able to provide um, labor market information. So think about as growing your business workforce as anything that has to do with recruitment or hiring someone. Another part of um, growing your workforce is if you are having trouble hiring someone, you can always come in and request a, a, a private recruitment where we have the space available for you guys to come in, kind of set shop here in our lobbies, and um, we do the marketing for you and kind of invite the public to come in and check out your business. Um, a lot of local employers have been taking advantage of that service. And so sometimes they're able to just, you know, spend an evening here at our WDC center and then be able to walk out with new employees. Um, these are unprecedented times, as we all know. Um, that is not always the case. Um, there is a high turnover. I'm sure you as employers have experienced that and we see it here. But for that same reason, um, we open these services for you guys to be able to uh, facilitate the hiring process and grow, being able to grow your business at no cost to you. Um, our next, our the next uh, thing that we can do for you would be training your workforce. And that is pertaining to our OJT programs, our incumbent programs, and that's funds, funds that are available to you guys. Um, we're going to talk about um, our OJT program in a minute and our incumbent worker program, which are funds available for those businesses who are looking to hire someone and need um, can request a reimbursement um, in exchange for training that new employee. You're going to have to train new employees anyways. So the county is offering this on the job training program to kind of help you guys offset the cost of, of onboarding. Um, and then last but not least would be downsizing your workforce. Um, we do this through our rapid response program. Our team is equipped to provide prompt on-site assistance. And first of all, does anybody know what a rapid response is? I don't want to be using language that we don't all understand. So basically a rapid response, what it is, is when a business is closing, um, we receive the notice. And so it is our job and our duty to help you guys transition transition your workers during that difficult time. So the County of Riverside comes in with a team and um, we offer these dislocated workers all the services that they're going to need in order to make a more informed consent decision about what their next step is going to be. And that entails, you know, job search and placement assistance, um, helping them build their resume, um, giving them all the unemployment insurance information that they might need, just so that there is some 
kind of stability while they're going through this transition. Does that make sense? Perfect. Okay, so um, next slide, Bradley. Okay, so back to, um, back to you know, being able to uh, grow your workforce. We, like I said, we do it through a monthly recruitments. Um, we have our rifcojobs.org available where you as an employer at no charge to you can come and post your job, all your available positions. Um, the Once you post a position, the first 72 hours, they're only available to veterans. After those 72 hours, then it gets released to the rest of the public. So for those individuals or those business owners who kind of want to concentrate on hiring a veteran, just know that um, whenever you first you post a position, it becomes available first to our veterans. And then after that, released to the rest of the public. We have here in the Indio WDC, we run our monthly job fairs. Those are completely free. We provide the space. We, we provide um, tables, chairs. Um, and that happens every last Thursday of every month from 10 to 12.30. Um, our last job fair was actually yesterday, and we had a total of 27 employers that showed up. Um, and we have, like I said, small businesses. Um, I mean, to be, we've had Walmart in here. We've had, um, yesterday we had Ross here that is getting ready to open here in the Valley. Um, and they take advantage of that because we provide everything and we bring in the people too. OK, um, we scrape our database. What does scraping our scraping database means is um, we have access to Cal jobs. So then if you are uh, struggling finding the right candidate, um, our special our development specialist can go in there and with the qualities that you give them and we can find someone that matches those qualities and refer them out to you. I know a lot of people um, are going through Indeed and, and, and other um, hiring agencies, but this is just another another resource that it's available to you through the county and it's completely free. I, th I thought I saw a question. Is there, is there a question, Bradley? Yeah, Juan is asking how long does the job stay the job posting stay available to veterans before they are offered uh, to the non-veteran community? 72 hours. 72 hours and then and then he gets released to the general public. Okay. Then we also work with all kinds of organizations, education organizations, hiring partners, and we distribute whatever you send my way, we'll go ahead and distribute it with our partners in order to help you find um, that ideal candidate. Um, next slide, Bradley. We're able to give referrals, just like I think Atlantis was asking about the grant, and you know we were going to refer them to um, to to the economic development, and then Ugo came along and saved the day. So we worked together in collaboration with the rest of the offices, and so we we're able to offer referrals to other partner agencies and organizations, and then um, we scrape our databases. Um, once we have candidates available for your positions, we're more than happy to pre-screen those. Um, those, those candidates for you as well. And then uh, something that's very important that I think that not a lot of people take advantage of is um, we have labor market information. We're able to tell you, you know, what positions are in the rise, what positions are, you know, not as popular. Um, we can tell you unemployment, depending on your area, to just give you um, uh, more information so you can make better choices and better decisions for your business and when you're trying to hire. Next slide. So this is, I think, what everybody wants to know, the on-the-job training programs where the money is. So we do offer on-the-job training. So we offer with, we, we help you with recruitment, but what happens once we have somebody, an ideal candidate? Well, we have to train them. And training costs money. So Riverside County uh, put together this, this program called on the job training and basically it's a very straightforward uh, program um, we will reimburse you 50 percent of a new hire's wages for up to 480 hours so one of the common hassles of hiring new employees obviously is is the training process and typically you have to pay your employee 
while they're there and while they're learning. But what happens if it doesn't work out? That's those are funds that you as a business owner, you're you're losing, right? So we've done this to kind of help employers offset the cost of onboarding. Um, and we can help you offset some of those costs um, by reimbursing you up to 50%. Does that make sense? Now, this one, I know that um, somebody asked if it was um, through an application. It is through an application process. Um, we make it very simple. Um, we work with the employers and the applicant that's coming in. And basically for the employer, uh, we require three things. We require a W-9, a liability insurance, and a workers' comp. And that's all you need to be in. And your future candidate or your 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 um your candidate, your potential candidate has to fill out the actual application. But it's, you know, and it's it's a pretty straightforward application. Um you, they're more than welcome to come in and make an appointment here if they're having issues filling out the application and we can assist them with that here as well. There are requirements to our on-the-job training um, program. Um, one of it, it has to be a new employee. So you can't have an existing employee and then put them on this on-the-job training. You have to be able to give the opportunity to a new individual. It has to be at least 32 hours per week. You have to have workers comp. You have to, and the job cannot be seasonal. I know the holidays are coming and a lot of businesses are starting to hire seasonal, but the purpose of the on the job training is that it becomes a full, full, uh, full time and permanent position. And obviously, the position must fall under the seven, uh, seven industries that we discuss. Okay. Next slide. Uh, yes. I mean, I have a question. Yes. I know um, the screen says Riverside County. So are these services for every business in Riverside? I know you mentioned Coachella, but is oh, this for everybody yes. in Riverside? So I mentioned Coachella just because I'm I'm stationed out in India and the hospitality part only pertains okay. to the Coachella Valley. But if your business is anywhere within the Riverside County, all these services pertain. And the second question is, would you also pay for the training if the employee was not provided by the workforce development organization? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can come in with your own hire or we can help you. But as the, the most important part is that the business has to reside within the Riverside County. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next slide, um, Bradley. So mm, you're probably asking, okay, I, I just hired someone a month ago. I wish I would have known this information before. So what happens if you're in that situation is we offer our incumbent worker training. And that program um, focuses on those individuals that you already have hired and that they're already working there. Let's say they have to be working with you for a minimum of um, six months. And this is for those individuals who are upskilling their level. So let's say you have, you own a, a restaurant and you have a cashier and that individual is doing such a wonderful job um, and you decide to make them a manager. You would apply first for this incumbent worker training program, and we would help you uh, pay for the training, whatever the cost of the training that's going to take to train this individual to become a manager. Does that make sense? And then again, it it, it goes into every single different um, industry. So doesn't that was just an example that I'm using. Um, this one is fairly new. Um, there is an employer eligibility. There is an income and worker eligibility as well. And again, for the for the employer, you need to be um, you need to be be able to prove that you're upgrading this individual skills. Um, that you are um, you have to be in operation for at least a year. Um, you have to meet all the OJT requirements as well, which is your W-9 and your liability and your workers' comp. And then for the incumbent worker eligibility, that person um, 
must be 18 years of age, must have already been employed with you for six, uh, six months. Um, if it's a male, they must be registered with the, uh, the selective service. So if you, any of you are interested in this particular program, um, always, you know, feel free to reach out and we can go more in depth. But um, the on the job training program is what usually employers are more interested um, when, when hiring. Next slide. And for those individuals who desperately need um, employees, because I know we all do at this point, um, we have our uh, extended subsidized employment program. Uh, we work in partnership with the Department of Public Services. And what we do is we're able to provide uh, employees through our DPSS pool, meaning that these are individuals that are receiving some type of benefit, right? And we are trying to help them get out of, get out of, the benefit and be able to support themselves, you know, um, through through a job. And what we do is um, the, the Department of Public Services will offer you a list of candidates and you can go over it and schedule your own interviews. And once you do your interview, if you like someone or you decide on a candidate, then you can go ahead and hire that individual. There is a reimbursement to it. I believe is a 90% reimbursement. Um, and there is an extension after six months. Um, the person who runs this specific program is not here today, couldn't actually be here today, but if anyone is interested in going that route and hiring through our uh, public assistance pool, definitely before you guys leave, let me know and I can go ahead and forward your information to the representative that handles that. And then she'll be able to explain to you more of the reimbursement within, within um, the ESE program. Does Next. the employee have, sorry, no, does the ahead. employee for this program, um, they would have to qualify for like CalFresh or CalWork? Yes. So Would these that, are okay. individuals that are already within um, the public assistance pool, meaning they receive any type of assistance, whether it's cash aid, um, you know, um, CalFresh, wh whatever uh, assistance they receive, um, they have to be enrolled in this ESE. You don't bring the person in. Um, the Department oh. of Public Services will provide you with a list. Oh, so, okay. So, so, yeah. for, so if one of my employees is currently on CalFresh, that would not qualify her for this program? Not for ESC, but it would definitely qualify for an on-the-job training. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's just a combination. All these programs, they're just different combinations. So if you... If you ever have any doubt, just give us a call and, you know, explain to us, this is our situation. This is who we're trying to hire. This is their situation. And we can definitely tell you if, if they, they're eligible for any type of uh, program that would benefit your business. Even though um, for the on-the-job training, even though they are an existing employee, they could still possibly qualify because they receive assistance? Um, if it's on the job training, if it's an existing em employee, it wouldn't because on the job training focuses on new people, new employees. New employees. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But Thank if you. it's an existing employee, um, and let's say you are, you know, giving them a, a new position, um, they would definitely qualify. Oh, okay. Yeah. For it's the on the job training. Company. For the incumbent. Oh, for the incumbents. Yeah, okay. incumbents are individuals who have been working with you already. On the job training focuses only on new individuals coming into your business, new hires. Okay, so the incumbent also comes with a 50% um, yes. rate to payroll yes. back. And then yeah. it's good for how many hours? For, uh, for the incumbent. Bradley, you want to go back to the incumbent? Just don't want to. It doesn't say because it doesn't say there it doesn't say but i think it's also 450 um oh, okay a, yeah and this is if i start training her to like be a manager or supervisor or something correct like that. Okay. correct yes it has to um yeah so they have to go from one lower position to some, a higher position okay i understand thank you mm-hmm And then um, next, and then our, our rapid response. So um, like I mentioned before, 
if you um, if your job or your business is closing or moving out of the state, you're going to have dislocated workers. So part of our mission is to be able to accommodate those individuals in finding a job right away. But if they don't want to find a job, let's say they want to take that opportunity and go back to school, then we can provide, you know, training and educational resources for them, you know, have give them the opportunity to, let's say, learn HVAC or learn phlebotomy or, um, you know, learn a technical skill that will allow them to um, get a better job, you know, um, we do provide information about local industry growth and wages um, through our labor market information to them, just so they can make that decision about like, what do I really want to do with my life? Do I want to continue doing this job or do I want to uh, switch switch gears and enter and explore new careers? Um, we provide career counseling through our career coaches as well. And these are our career coaches that kind of guide them, help them, you know, complete a resume, um, help them get into schools if they need to get into schools anything that will help them better their situation or be able to find um, another job as soon as possible. And that is called, that's our rapid response program. Um, we come in, we're able to, uh, we come in with a team um, that we collaborate with and it consists of child support services. It consists of EDD. And a lot of people are uh, saying like, well, wow, child support services. We have to remember that we all have lives um, as workers. And when you're when you're losing your job because you're, the plant that you work for is shutting down, you know, you still need to continue paying those bills. So we bring all these different departments that can help you, uh, for example, child support services, adjust your claim so you don't go into default. We bring EDD that can answer um, unemployment insurance. A lot of individuals have never uh, filed for unemployment. So there's all these uncertainties and all these questions, right? When do I file? How soon can I file? How much are they gonna give me? So we bring these individuals to these sessions or workshops that we put together so that these located workers can come sit down um, and be able to ask questions and be able to make their next move with the information that they need. I'm very passionate about rapid response. So are there any questions on this, on this particular subject? Perfect. Next slide, um, Bradley. And then locations. I know um, Rosina was asking, well, what, you know, if you needed to be within the Riverside County, yes. In order to access all these services, your business must be um, within the Riverside County and your candidates must reside in the Riverside County. Um, you don't necessarily need to come down to India where I'm at. Um, you need to just visit whatever location is closest to you. Um, we have locations out in Riverside, Indio, Hemet, Moreno Valley, Blythe. Um, Moreno Valley uh, does uh, Temecula as well, but we don't have, we have something what we call a satellite office. Um, so always never hesitate to reach out and um, and we can definitely redirect you to the, uh, to the office that's closest to you. Uh, and then as you can see, um, we're pretty much a one-stop center. We're here to help you every step of the way. Um, we're available to provide referrals, business analysis, counseling, um, career services. So those, these are just some options that, you, that can help you save time and money. And then again, all the services are free. There are no cost to you. And then our workforce development centers are you know, located throughout the county. And, you know, and we're here to answer some questions, you know, if we have an HR line, I just want to throw this out there. Um, uh, not so long ago, we opened an HR line. We realized that not all small businesses have the ability to have an HR department. So we do have an HR line. And we always say before you hire, call before you fire, call just to make sure that you are doing things the right way and that you are, you know, following the law. And that's another service that we just added last year for you guys to take advantage of. And then um, I just want to take the opportunity to thank um, the Caravan Sarai Project for the opportunity to bring you these services and this information and allowing this space and time. And at this moment, if you guys have any questions, I kind of want to open a discussion. Um, any questions that you can think of, you know, 
I'm here to answer. The okay, HR information, I will drop drop the HR information in a minute. Uh, Carmen, Carmen. You provide, can you provide your telephone number or email address, Carmen? Yes, um, Bradley, do we have uh, do we have that? I info? do. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I'll I let it. me. Sh okay. Yeah, me if you want to. Yes, I, I have. It. Just wanted to uh, thank Carmen for uh, for joining us, and I I, I know you you are uh, talking from the Riverside County perspective. Uh, can you share more a bit about the existence of such services in San Bernardino County or other counties? If somebody is not in Riverside County, how what, what's the best way of learning such information and reach out to your peers or colleagues that if they are not in Riverside County? Because some, I think, part of our uh, friends here are Bernardino County, LA County, yes. Imperial, and, and so on. Yes. So the good thing is that yeah. each county has something called an AJCC center. And if you email me, um, I will be more than happy to provide you with um, your AG AJCC center. Um, we have them all over California. So you don't necessarily, I understand if you're not from the Riverside County, we have them in LA, we have them in Orange County, we have them in San Bernardino. So just go ahead and email me because the list is just, <coughs> you know, um, or you can visit, I can definitely They're called AJCC Centers of America. So if you search that and go to uh, the tab where it says locations, America's, America's Job Centers of California. And if you go, there should be a tab that says locations. And it's going to give you all the workforce development centers throughout California. Or you can just email me and I'll be more than happy to reply. But the good thing is that every single county has a similar program. They might not be exactly the same programs with the same reimbursement rates, but they are. They uh, we all try to work together um, so that it's consistent across California. And for, for full disclosure, Caravanserai has three on-the-job training participants now that the folks that have joined us, Tatek, Brian, and Sierra, uh, are part of on-the-job training program. So we are taking advantage of um, the resources uh, the county is, uh, is offering. And we are a nonprofit. So if you are a nonprofit, that's something um, you are uh, eligible um, for, uh, for such programs. And um, just for the HR, I know somebody asked about the HR information. It is on my business card. It is a phone number, and they're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. And that's a no cost. Any type of question, payroll question, hiring uh, questions, um, you can call there, and it is run by an HR uh, department. Carmen, HR I have one last question. Um, you know that nonprofits, um, and, and Mihai, thank you for bringing this to, to everybody. This is- Of really course. Good. I'm with US Bank and I'm a supporter of Mihai and the work that he does is amazing. But um, it, are nonprofits also uh, categorize the small businesses with a nonprofit qualify for the services of just a regular business? No, absolutely. You know, we my high is one of our clients. The Caravans Ride Project is one of our clients. Um, most of the time, they fall under other services. Okay. Um, in in uh, in Sierra's um, uh, case, I believe she fell under administrative. So it just depends yep. on. That's why that's why I say you know each each situation is different each application is different it's not always the same thing not everybody falls and checks the same boxes and so uh, what the development specialist does is that we sit down with the business and we work with you okay what's the position because a lot of it depends on what they're going to be doing but yes um, nonprofits definitely qualify. I have a question too. Um, so say uh, the small business owner um, works in Cathedral City, you know, of course, and she's under Riverside. Um, what if what if the business wanted to branch out to 
a part of San Bernardino County, like Yucca Valley, you know, even though it's close to the valley, it's now San Bernardino County. Um, would that now fall under them, even though her, um, you know, original business is in Riverside County? She just wants to kind of expand to San Bernardino. Would we then have to contact San Bernardino County to help? If your um, if your candidate resides in San Bernardino, yes. Oh, uh, what if they're a Riverside County? Um, but then they're like, oh, we'll travel to Yucca Valley. You then know, that that would be yeah, that would be a good mm -hmm. that would be. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Carmen, I have another question. Is is it possible to hire somebody that you know qualifies for that specific position you're looking for, but um, he's still working with other company? Can you refer him like to the post we're gonna do in this um, program or for the for the on the job training? Yes. Okay. So yes. So we have a lot of a lot of potential candidates that um, are still working somewhere else. But when we have when we run into that, then we have to go by an income eligibility because you could be having two, three jobs and not be able to make ends meet. Right. We all know that. So it's a matter of um, we do we do request a six months worth of um, income proof and then we can go from there. So if you have someone like that and you're interested in putting them on the job training, um, we can always take a look at their income, what they're doing, what they're earning. And um, if they fall under income, then we can definitely approve them for an, an OJT, even though they're still working. If they're not working, then they're considered unemployed. It's it's a um, it's an automatic um, approval because that individual is unemployed and obviously requires a job. OK, does it make sense, okay. Brian? Yes, yeah. it does. Thank you. Any more questions, anyone? Also, also the human resources hotline. Um, that does it work for and like anybody in California? Anybody. And okay. uh, what this one is particular to our Riverside County uh, business owners and residents. Um, the San Bernardino, like I said, um, every county should be operating one. Oh, okay. But That's if your good. business yeah. is in the Riverside County, that would be the number to call. No, the reason I'm I'm bringing this up is because I have another friends that they they're also business owners, so they yes. also take advantage of this. Absolutely, information. please share this information or share my contact information, and, and I'm always happy to um to discuss this with any business owner. Another thing that we do for employer services is we do these webinars. Um, or we actually come out to you, you know, um, if you can't come to us, we have no problem visiting your business and, and visiting you and going out to you and doing this presentation. So you, you just mentioned I have other friends that are business owners. If you are interested in putting together uh, a party, because um, then, you know, I we're more than happy to go out and meet you and provide um, this this information for you, to you guys. Thank you so much. And I did see a question, um, Carmen, from Marta. Um, she's asking, how familiar is the HR department um, hotline with uh, nonprofit regulations? That it's, um, well, they're, they're human resources professionals. So um, once she calls, then she can definitely just explain their case to them. And then if there is not somebody that is knowledgeable with the, the, that nonprofit sector, they can definitely refer them out. I, I am going to throw the million dollar question. Okay. <laughs> is everybody as nice as you in some of the other agencies? Because honestly, I think that has a lot to do with access. You know, you are incredibly helpful and really show the desire to help. But with agencies in other um, counties, be the same. <laughs> That's a good question, Rosina. I can only speak for our employer services here at uh, Riverside County, and I can tell you every single one of our development specialists is um, very nice to talk to. Um, this is what we're in for. This is what we enjoy doing. Um, I, I mean, there's only five of us, so I can really tell you that everybody is very, very nice. Um, 
I have an open door policy. Um, even if you're not within the Coachella Valley and if you feel more comfortable reaching out to me, you are more than welcome to just always email me or drop by my office. I have an open door policy. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, we, we can vouch for Karna and her team. Uh, very uh, always coming with the solution to our questions. So we try to make it work for everyone see. because we understand how yeah. stressful it is to run a business. We understand that, um, you know, people sometimes um, don't have the right information and it is incredible once you have information all the things that you can do we've seen businesses grow just because based on this information that we're able to provide um, and this is kind of like the county's best kept secret a lot of people don't know about it a lot of businesses don't know about it and they're struggling not knowing that the county can come in and and, and offer some help and so that is the that is the drive behind um, these these presentations that we do. Well, thank you, Carmen. I don't know. Are there any other questions? I see Lady sharing her experience with LA County. <laughs> so at, at least now, if you go back to them, Lady, you you'll know. You know more details about the programs and you can directly ask them the questions uh, that you need, uh, you know, about the programs that you know they, they should have. So hopefully this, uh, this uh, helps. And one again, guys, if um, if you feel like I didn't really go into depth in in some of these areas, um, please reach out, and I can definitely spend some time with you on the phone or you know through Zoom, um, and explain to you. Uh, in a more detail, you know, I know we all have um, a really busy schedule and we have carved out an hour of our time. And it's actually crazy because I think it's already been an hour. Um, but if you feel like you need a one on one session, definitely open to that. Give me a call. We can schedule something um, for those individuals who feel more comfortable in Spanish. Bradley and Carolina are working on a Spanish session um, and we're going to be bringing all this information in Spanish. I know some a lot of people are Spanish speakers and we speak English, but we just our brain processes better when it's in, in our native language. Right. We know that. So if you are interested in a Spanish session, talk to Bradley and um, and we're, we're uh, working on a Spanish session that's, that's going to be coming up soon. Thank you. It's been an hour, so uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Carmen, for uh, joining you. us today and uh, uh, sharing all this useful information. Um, I don't know. Happy uh, holiday weekend. Hope everyone will uh, will take a rest and do something fun. And uh, see you next time. Thank you, everyone.